We actually started uh, Vitra, what we call Generation One, back in 1994. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and so we focused uh, at that time on some emerging markets of BPM and business activity monitoring. So it was really the more real-time integration and movement and orchestration of information, and then trying to analyze that. Uh, very successful, took the company public on that. Uh, but uh, by around late uh, 2000s, 2007, 2008, we decided that there was an emerging opportunity we really wanted to focus the company on. So the original founders and some of the original investors came back in, reinvested in the company, took it private, and since then been really focused on real-time analytics. Okay. And, and you know, that is an area that I am very passionate about and very excited about. You talked about um, sort of restarting and recapitalizing and yeah. you know, going private and based on a, a passion in mm -hmm. this area. Uh, what is it about analytics that, that got you excited enough to do this? Because that's a major undertaking. Excited about analytics and excited about real time, both of those. Mm -hmm. And putting those two together, and that's really what we're focused on. Analytics, we're now seeing that in, uh, in business and especially in the emerging Internet of Things, IoT, right. Analytics is constituting 30 to 40 percent of the value there, and actually that percentage is likely to go up. So it's something that is contributing huge value to to the economy uh, and to the businesses. So that makes that exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, real time has always been exciting for me because I believe that uh, people interact in real time in the real world, uh, and uh, this is the way we want to conduct businesses. This is the way we should be getting information. This is the way we should be acting on those. Uh, and so bringing those two concepts together, to me, was extraordinarily exciting. Plus, it was a third thing that was happening in the marketplace, and it's, you re really have seen it now, is the rise of uh, big data. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, and most of that now is being generated through the Internet of Things. And that is a trend that, as we know, is accelerating uh, in this world. So those three trends really made me very excited about mm -hmm. restarting the company and really focusing on this new opportunity. What sorts of uh, technologies are you dependent on for your solutions, and what are you developing yourself? Uh, the key technologies are uh, the rise of big data infrastructures to mm -hmm. support that, and then the uh, rise of streaming big data infrastructures that support that, and we, uh, there's uh, actually excellent open source technology out there. Mm -hmm. Now, these are frameworks that are enablers for acquiring data and perhaps processing it quickly. What you need to build on top of that is the modeling environments that capture the analytics and enable ordinary people, as we call it, to capture the analytics. The, mm -hmm. the, op the uh, operational people, for example, or the business people to capture that. And to uh, really uh, build of, uh, what we would call complex analytics, advanced analytics. So would it be fair to say that, uh, as you're talking about uh, ordinary people or regular people, I forget, yeah. forget the phrase that you use, uh, as opposed to data scientists, that you're providing some level of abstraction that allows people with um, more limited knowledge of the underlying technology right. to get the business value from it? Right. You know, we don't expect people to be rocket scientists uh, or data scientists. That's a small market. Uh, yeah. Or being, <clears throat> or be uh, big data programmers to right. do this. You know, we really want to put it into the hands of the people who know the business. Yeah. Uh, and so what we're doing is providing a very high level abstraction. We call it the analytic pipeline. Okay. So you think in terms of you capture the data, you uh, do some, you enrich the data with contextual information. Mm -hmm. And I think what would help there is if you take an example coming off of, for example, a smart meter. Okay. You want, to, you want to not only be able to, and let's look, you want to look at the operational performance of that and your concern about maybe fraud or failure. So that data comes in and you want to be able to capture it, you need to enrich it. In this case, if you're looking at failure, you would want real-time weather information. Right. Because as you know, that's a big contributor to failures on the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you enrich that data and then you do analytics like KPIs, like you look at voltage sags over that up and down for that. Uh, and that provides a certain set of value. Uh, but then you can extend that with the notion of advanced analytics. So what I'd like to do is looking at voltage signatures over time, do I predict a failure or a problem with that? Mm -hmm. So you can come and uh, introduce predictive models now. And predictive failures and predictive maintenance is probably one of the largest use cases for real-time information. 
Uh, and then you, the next step is using another type of advanced analytics, which is called prescriptive analytics. Okay. Now, uh, descriptive, prescriptive, and predictive analytics are things that are not in many people's vocabularies. Right. And, they did, and uh, a few years ago, they would not be able to use those. And it's really our goal to enable uh, people who uh, are focused on the business itself or on the, uh, the things, the internet that they're trying to, internet of things that they're trying to measure, to really enable them to do this. And so this is what we're bringing to the table uh, uh, on top of these more basic frameworks that are provided. Right. What we want to do is enable this analytic pipeline, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where you are doing your descriptive analytics, which right. is telling your KPIs, for example, and what's yep. going on right now. Okay, you can do your predictive analytics to say, okay, without you know what's likely to happen next, whether you're trying to track mm -hmm. someone to to make them an offer, or whether you're trying to predict failure in the electric grid, yep. and then the prescriptive part, which is uh, you know telling you what's the next big action. And then there's one final piece, which is called the action part, <laughs> okay? Because if right. you don't take the action, you don't realize the value. Yep. That's the core. That's what we call the analytic pipeline, mm -hmm. okay? And as you walk down those steps of the pipeline, you're generating more and more value. So it's really like the analytic value chain, like the concept of a right. value chain in there. And what we focus on is enabling our customers to develop those analytic pipelines. So we provide a, a nice visual programming uh, capability to allow them to build these pipelines. And we provide all the analytics that they need for that. Now, one factor in that is, okay, I want to do predictions, I need predictive right. models. I want to do prescriptions, I need prescriptive models. And quite likely you're going to be using machine learning techniques for that, mm -hmm. and you need the historical data. So we, want, we support the entire life cycle by also capturing the data, okay. supporting machine learning techniques over that, and allowing you to operationalize those machine learning techniques to run at speed. So we take care of the entire analytic life cycle. That's what we do. We allow our customers to build this analytic value chain which mm -hmm. delivers value to them. And our tools allow them to maintain the entire analytic life cycle. We go to market in two ways. We build this analytic platform that allows our uh, customers to define their analytic value chain or the analytic okay. pipeline. Uh, but we also, uh, in just a couple months, we're coming out with uh, an analytic platform as a service offering. Okay. So they can just go and the cloud-based offering. Uh, mm -hmm. They can public. Uh, we'll have a public site. They can also install it on private cloud if they want to do it, and come mm -hmm. and define the analytics as a service. Okay. Now, uh, we expect them to have an ecosystem around them, as you said, that may right. be one that uh, they may be using vendors that offer RA, offer data science as a service, mm -hmm. uh, machine learning as a service, et cetera. Uh, and our goal, both in the on-premise and the cloud offerings, is to make it easy to capture those models that they build there's analytic models, right. okay, and to operationalize them because the models have no value to them until you operationalize them. Mm -hmm. You build the models, sure. okay, and you, these are maybe great predictive models, but now you need to insert it into your data stream. Mm -hmm. That's what we call operationalizing it, running it at scale and at speed, so it gives you those real-time predictions and allows you to, to take those real-time actions. I think you made some really important points in terms of not waiting until you have the perfect model. That's right. Because you'll be waiting a very long time. You're, you're missing out on the value that you could be getting. Uh, but I also like what you're talking about in terms of uh, the, the process of constant improvement of the model uh, as you get more data and mm -hmm. as you get more experience. So I think that's great. I think you're in a terrific space and I uh, wish you luck with it. Well, thank you. We're very Thanks. excited about the space. Uh, and I appreciate the time to talk with you. Great. Today.